Do you need healing? That's the big question for us because God wants us to experience uh, good health. We're learning this in the context of a series of messages that we started a few weeks ago called A Life Written in Red. So what does that mean? I've posed a question for you uh, to help us kind of understand the concept behind the series. And the question is this, who do you listen to? Because whoever we listen to influences us to become who we become. And there's someone we should be listening to, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Everybody say, the, everybody say the name Jesus. Jesus. We need to be listening to Jesus. And his words are literally written in red. If you have a red letter edition of the Bible like I do. And we can know if we're following him, if we're listening to him, because our lives are proving it. His words are written all over us. In other words, we're becoming like him and becoming the people that he wants us to be. So who do you listen to? One of the ways in which we can tell who we're listening to or who we're believing or trusting in is when we're in times of crisis, when things are going difficult, diff difficultly in, in our lives, when the circumstances are hard for us. For example, think about someone who is sick, someone who has a debilitating disease, if they were diagnosed with that, how would they respond? What would, what would they be feeling? How would they be if they heard that message? What would their life be like? The way in which they respond to a situation like that says a lot about who we're listening to or what we believe life is about. Think about it for yourself. How would you be if you got that news that you had some health issue or maybe you have a health issue that you've been dealing with for a long period of time? How is it that you are handling those situations in life? The good news is, is that with Christ, no matter how bad things get, things can still be good. Amen? Because we have hope in him. We have trust in him. And praise God, we have a God who has the power and the ability to heal. And we believe that. We absolutely believe that. I share all this with you today because we're going to be looking at a story in the Bible where we're going to be hearing some words of Jesus as he talked to a guy who had a debilitating health issue. He had something going on in his life and he needed help. He needed to have hope. Because he was stuck in a place where he felt like he couldn't do anything about it. But with Jesus, again, all things are possible. I want to read this story to you, and it's found in the book of John. And it's in John chapter 5, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. So let's listen to what happened as Jesus meets this man. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool. The Sheep Gate is it's an actual place of Jerusalem. It's on the northern wall of Jerusalem, kind of at the northeastern corner of the city. So there's this place, the Sheep Gate Pool. And it goes on and says this, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. The word Bethesda means this, house of mercy. So this place was known as a house of mercy. Then it goes on in verse 3. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. Let me stop again. Am I annoying you yet or what? All right. Let me stop again. Let me explain something to you that, that's happening in the scripture. Because something really weird is about to happen. If you have a King James Version of the Bible, there is a verse 4. I'm reading to you from the New International Version, and many other translations are the same way that the New International Version is. There is no verse 4. <gasps> what is up with that? How is there a verse in the King James Version that doesn't appear in other translations of the Bible? This is so interesting. What happened was, at the time of the translation of the Bible, the King James Version, there were only a certain number of manuscripts that had been discovered of the Scriptures. Since that time, there are older manuscripts that have been found, older than the ones that they used to transcribe from. And in those older manuscripts, there is no verse 4. So what they believe is that there most likely was a scribe who was translating in the time of the King James Version Bible, was translating the scripture, and he wanted to give as the scribe an explanation of why these people we're going down to that pool and what they believed about the pool. So I actually put on the screen, on your sheet, I included verse 
4, and it has KJV at the end of it, the King James Version, all right? This is what it says. It says this, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then, first after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So he was given an explanation of what they believed about the pool and that the first person who got in would be healed. Make sense? Don't you just love Bible trivia? Wasn't that fun? Okay, let's continue on. In verse 5, it all goes together now. All right, the translations go together now. One who was there had been an invalid for, for 38 years when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. He asked him, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Say that with me. Do you want to get well? It's a big question. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, it's the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, uh, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd and, uh, that was there. Later, Jesus, though, found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. This is such an interesting story to me. Jesus did something great for this man. But Jesus made a statement. Actually, the statement was a question. And the question was this. Do you want to get well? And that's the question I want to pose for you today, and I believe the scripture poses for us today. Do you want to get well? I have to make it personal for me. Do I want to get well? Well, from what? Well, there are a lot of different types of sicknesses that we can experience, a lot of different causes. So that's what we're going to learn about first today. On your outline sheet, number one talks about these. There are causes associated with our sicknesses First of those calls we're going to see is this. It's something that we're very familiar with. It's our bodies, right? We'll call it our physiology. Physiological causes. That's a big word. The physiological causes for our sicknesses. What is that? It's a defect in the body which occurs because of disease or genetic makeup. It might be that I caught some type of disease that has, has led me to be sick, or it might be that I was born with some kind of genetic disorder that has caused me to be who I am, but I am physically unable. That's who I am. There's a second cause. This has to do with our mind. It's psychological. There are psychological causes. It's a defect in the body which occurs because of incorrect thinking. In other words, because I think about things in a certain way, it makes me feel certain things. I respond to things emotionally in certain ways. And because I respond in this way, it puts stress on my body. That, that's what happens. In other words, because I, I'm going through a difficult time and I start thinking there's no way out of this or I can't believe I've been put in this situation or somebody else put me in this situation or whatever it is, I start thinking about those things and I become anxious. I experience anxiety or I might get depressed because I can't believe people are treating me this way, or I might become angry toward other people. And when we have these emotions of anger and depression and anxiety, it changes the chemical makeup of our brain, and it affects our physical condition in our entire body. I mean, you know, y'all get it, right? There are a lot of people who experience anxiety, who have high blood pressure, who have heart problems. There are people who've had cancer issues because of what they go through in their emotional state. So it might be that I'm going through a physical situation in my life, and the reason why I'm going through the physical situation is because of my emotional condition. I psychologically am thinking these things, and I'm putting stress on my body, and it's causing me to be sick. There's a third reason we can be sick. Now, that third reason has everything to do with who we are spiritually. So on your outline sheet, fill it in. There are spiritual causes. It's a defect in the body which occurs because of poor choices. What does that mean? 
let me connect this what we just, with what we just learned about the psychological part of it. In psychology, I've talked about emotions a lot here because I've shared with you my struggles with being bipolar and OCD and those these things, being on medication and all of that. I've talked about that before. But I, I've shared with you the, the process psychologically of how we react to our lives. We think, after we think, we feel, and after we feel, we act. I think a certain thing because I think this about a situation. I have emotions. I become angry. I become jealous. I become uh, uh, depressed. I become whatever because of that. And those feelings lead me into actions. Now I behave. I choose. I start making choices. And what I do is I want relief from my anxiety or my depression or my anger, so I'm trying to find ways in which I can find relief. So I decide to do things. I make choices. I decide to abuse substances. I overdrink or I take drugs or I do this or I do that. And because of those choices, I'm doing things that are harmful to my body. It might be this. I need relief, so I begin practicing poor nutrition. I overeat because... For some reason in my mind, I believe that food becomes the medicine of my life to help me feel better. So I overeat or I get addicted to the wrong types of food or I may not eat at all because I'm depressed and therefore it affects my physical condition. Or it might be this, I get involved in sexual behaviors. God wants us to experience sexuality in the context of marriage. That's how it's supposed to be. But I become promiscuous or I begin behaving in a certain way because I'm after pleasure. I'm looking for an escape because I feel so badly about my life. And I do things and it causes disease or something that happens in my life. And all of these, whether it be substances or nutritional or sexual things, all of these things can become addictions that take place in our life. These are what we call poor choices that affect our bodies in a negative way. Y'all follow it, right? It's a spiritual thing. Why is it spiritual? Because the spiritual part of life is all about what we trust in. What we believe will make our lives better. We place faith in doing this that it will make me happy. So that's what we trust in. It's a spiritual condition. But what we do is we become spiritually sick because instead of helping things, we're hurting ourselves. And there's a name for this. Spiritual sickness is called sin. Y'all heard of that, my brothers and sisters, haven't you? It's sin. What is sin? Sin is not bringing glory to God. That's what the Bible says. I want you to read the scripture out loud with me. It's Romans 3, 23. If y'all have uh, memorized this yourself, but let's read it all together. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So sin is falling short of the glory of God. Okay, that sounds interesting, but what in the world does that mean? What does it mean to bring glory to God? I'm so glad that you asked because I want to answer it for you. And here is the answer to what glory is. To bring glory is to support and promote what is important to God. I'm bringing honor and glory to God by supporting and promoting what is important to God. That's bringing glory to God. That's, that's helping people see what is important to him is important to me. So the big question is, what is important to God? If I'm to support what is important or uh, if I'm to promote what is important, then what is important? Here's the answer. People are important to God. People are important to God. God created us. And I am a people. I know it's not the right sense of the word, okay? Okay. I am a person. I am a people. I am a person. So therefore, I need to support who God created me to be. I need to promote who God created me to be. In other words, I need to make what God made better and healthy and not worse. To do something to make what God created worse is sin. 
and destructive. I love how Paul said this about our body. We read it in, in uh, the, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says this, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If, you? if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him for God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. He's talking about our bodies. We are important to God. So it's important for us to see these things because if I want to be well, I need to understand what do, I, what do I see in my life that's causing me to be sick. Is it physiological? Is it psychological that's leading me to be in this condition? Or is it spiritual that's leading me to be in this condition? Let's look at number two. God wants us to be involved in helping other people be well. That's what number two says. God can use us in the healing process of others. And that's what he did for Jesus. And we hear how he was involved in the process in the healing of this man. In verse six, John chapter five, verse six says, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, 38 years, right? He asked him, do you want to get well? So what did Jesus do to help this man in his condition? The first thing that he did is he saw him. That's what we have to do if we're going to help other people. On your outline, fill it in. We see. He saw him. He saw his condition. He recognized him. And he wanted him to be better. Our actually seeing people who are in pain is the beginning point of compassion for us. For us to do anything about what we see, we have to have compassion that begins to build in us. So I have to notice people, I have to see people, and I have to see their pain. And I need to ask myself the question, why is this person in this condition? And when I do this, compassion begins to grow in me. I shared with you a scripture a couple of weeks or three weeks ago now, and the last message that I, I shared with you about compassion and that this was Jesus' ministry. Out of compassion, he went around doing what he did for people. We read in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. We're talking about healing, right? Healing diseases and sicknesses. Then it says this, when he saw the crowds, he had, what's the next word? Compassion. When he saw... He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He saw them and then had compassion. Compassion followed his recognition of the pain of others. So where does this pain come from? What is causing the pain? How do we know? We do the second thing. We learn. We learn about them. This is so cool to me too about the scripture because it actually says that Jesus learned about this man. He learned that he had this condition for 38 years. What do we need to learn? We need to learn why are people in the condition that they're in? What in the past has led them to be who they are today? Let me put it this way. What has caused them to be sick? Was it physiological were they born with it, or do they have some kind of disease that they're, they're prone to because of their biology? Is it psychological because they're thinking in certain ways, and they're, they're putting their thoughts on all of these things that are not real and not true, and it's causing anxiety and depression and anger in them, which is leading them to have all these physical problems in their, in their life? Or is it spiritual? Is there some spiritual cause to their, their situation that has led them to be in the position that they're in? Why am I saying all this? Y'all, this is so, this is amazing. Because Jesus understood why the guy was in the condition that he was in. And we pick up on why he was in the condition when he comes back and he talks to him. Remember, he heals him. He kind of sneaks out. The, the person who's healed doesn't realize it's Jesus. Then people get ticked off and mad because the guy's walking around carrying his mat, which was against the law, man-made law, not God's law. God said, obey the Sabbath. And what man did is they put all these other little laws around that law to make sure nobody broke it. And one of them was, don't carry your mat. So 
he's carrying his mat. They're ticked off because he's breaking the law. They're not excited that he just got healed. They're mad because he's breaking the law. And they're mad about who told him to do it. Y'all, just a little side note. This could be a whole other part of the sermon. Actually, it was, and I knew there's no way I can do all of it, okay, in this message. But just, just a little sidebar to this. This situation was the beginning point. This moment was the beginning point of when the Jewish leaders had an attitude with Jesus and saw him as a lawbreaker against God, which would eventually lead to his crucifixion. This moment. This is the moment. He heals him. It comes back. He's telling me to, uh, to carry that. That's a lawbreaker. And then they get all ticked off, and then they start riling up against Jesus, which eventually would lead him to go to the cross. This is what Jesus knew about the man. He comes back to Jesus. This is the reason why, this is the other cool part about this. This is the reason why I think it was so important for Jesus to come back. Two reasons. First reason is because Jesus knew there was a reason for him to heal this man and was to eventually put him on the cross to give ultimate healing for everyone's sins. So this man needed to know it was him so it could begin the process to what would bring ultimate healing to all of us. Y'all, does that not just give you chills right there or what? Second reason, he wanted this man to be healed and not have the same problem over and over again. He told him what his problem was. Look at the scripture. It says this, so you are well, see, excuse me, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So what was the cause of his sickness? This is what I think. This is what I believe was the cause of his sickness. I believe it was spiritual in nature. And here's the reason why. Was it physiological? Was he born with it because of some, something? It doesn't seem that way because of this one word right here. Again, see, you are well again, which means he was well before. So he was okay at one time, but now he's sick. There's, something, there's some sickness in his life. And then he tells him, the other problem, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. In other words, the guy was still sinning. He hadn't even stopped sinning. To stop something, it has to be going on, right? So he tells him, stop sinning or something worse is going to happen to you. What's the worst that's going to happen to us? Here it is. Our sin will lead us to be separated from God forever. That's the worst that can happen to us. And Jesus wanted this man to be healed. This is so incredible to me, too. This is really amazing to me about Jesus. The guy's a sinner, and Jesus wants him to be well. He's a sinner. He's doing things wrong, things he shouldn't be doing, things that have led him to be in the condition he is, yet Jesus still wants him to be well. He didn't have the attitude, dude, you deserve what you're going through. You're a sinner. And judge him. Instead, in his grace, oh, y'all, this is good, in his grace and his mercy, he wanted this man to overcome the problems of his life so he could be better. That's what he wanted for him. And that's what we should want for other people. If people are sick, if they've got spiritual problems, if they're sinners, if they're messed up, doing terrible things, we should want them to find the good news that heals them of the thing that's causing the problems in their life. And let me tell you what it is. It's the love of Jesus who gave himself for us. And it was Jesus who did what he did for him so that he could be well. Oh, this is great. We learn, and once we learn about them, we act. We do something to meet that need. We do something to make sure that this person's needs are met so that ultimately their life will be changed. This is the great thing uh, about uh, our ministry. Uh, when you think about Jesus and what he did, Jesus had the supernatural ability to heal this man just by saying, be healed. God has given us the super servant power to use the spiritual gifts that God has given us to meet the needs of people where they are. If they've got physical needs or emotional needs or social needs or whatever their needs may be, to do what we can to help people who are going through struggles in their life, to help them overcome the challenge of their life. Why? Y'all have heard the phrase probably before, to win the right to be heard. I'm proving that I love you. 
I want to help you even though you don't deserve any help. You're a sinner. You've done bad things. That's the reason why you're in your condition. You're a sinner, but I love you, and I want to help you overcome your issues in your life because I want you to experience the ultimate healing that all of us need, and it's spiritual healing. It's for you to find that life is not about what you've trusted in that led you to the path, but life is about trusting in the one who loves us the most. It's our spiritual need. All of us have the spiritual need. Every one of us has the spiritual need. We all have a spiritual sickness. What is this spiritual sickness? It's sin, right? What is this spiritual need? We have chosen to trust in something that doesn't give us hope. We have paired ourselves with something that has caused us to go down a pathway where we don't feel good about our lives. It reminds me uh, about a lot of electronic things. In electronics, uh, there are different devices that you can pair to your phone. I mean, you can do just about everything now, right? Our thermostat at home, we can pair to our phone. You know, all of these different things that you can do. I brought an example for you today just to kind of illustrate this. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Okay, can you tell? I've hidden it. Okay, let, me, let me grab it. All right, this is so sweet, y'all. It just makes me happy pulling it out on the stage, okay? Here it is. You're probably wondering, what in the world is this? It looks spacey. All right, it's really cool. I, it's one of my favorite things that I, that I own. Awesome! Is that not sweet or what? Y'all, it's a scooter. It's great. I am lazy, and this helps me in my life. This is wonderful. Let me turn it on for you. Wait. This is awesome. i got to get my phone out because why? Because my, this is awesome. My phone pairs with this thing. It's so, oh, cool, look, look. You see the lights right here? I've got a little thing right here that I can actually change. Did you see it change? Yeah, this is awesome. I did that with my phone. I paired this with my, oh, listen to this, y'all. If you're in my way, did you hear the beat? right there. It's getting my way. If it's at nighttime, oh, do you see that? It's so sweet. This has changed my life. <laughs> Y'all, I love this thing. Here's the thing about the scooter. It takes me where I want to go. We pair ourselves with other things in life because we think what we pair ourselves with will take us where we want to go. Y'all, it's sweet, is it not? That's what we do. We pair ourselves with, with things and begin to believe that this is the answer for my life. And people are trying to get us to do it all over the place. Y'all, all over the place. It's so interesting about Instagram and TikTok and all these people. A lot of them are making tons of money because they have so many followers that are, you know, following them, that company paying them uh, to advertise for them. Do you know what they call these people, right? They call them influencers. They're influencers. They're trying to influence people to, to say, if you buy this, you're going to be happy. If you buy into this, you're going to be happy. If you look like me, you're going to be happy. If you're able to do this, you're going to be happy. This makes me happy. But it's going to break, and I'm going to lose my happiness. Do I have a witness out there from anyone, right? I'm going to lose my happiness. This gives me happiness, but it doesn't give me joy. That's right now. It doesn't give me joy. If I place my hope in this, I'm in trouble. That's what I've been teaching about, or we've been learning about through this series about spirituality right? I want you to look at it again on your outline sheet. What is it spiritually? We, we are to be people who help others have hope. We have, the word hope means to, to believe that what we want can be had. So what is it that I want that can be had? Is it more money? Is that going to be the answer? If I have that, it'll give me hope. If I get well, 
If I'm sick and I get well, that's going to give me what it is that I want. There's so many things that we want that we think are going to make our lives better, but it's not the answer. What is the answer? Not only to help others have hope, but to help others be loved. What we really want is we want to be loved. All of us want to be loved. You know what gives me joy? Being loved. You know why this doesn't give me joy? It doesn't love me back, right? It will run me into the wall like it did in the early service. (laughs) It will cause problems in my life, all right? It doesn't love me back. We all need love, and we need to love someone who loves us back no matter what. We need somebody who loves us unconditionally no matter what we've done that's wrong. And there is one who will do it 100% of the time, and his name is Jesus. It's not only to help others be loved, it's but to help others belong. God created us for community, that we're to be people together in community. Because in belonging to each other, we find other people who show love to us. How can we show love to each other if we don't know anybody else? God created us for community. But what happens is many people, instead of being in community, isolate themselves from other people. And what happens is, oh, wait a second, what happens with those people uh, who do this? They become blue. That's depressed. <laughs> blue. All right. They become blue. I know it was a stretch, but it was a good, good thing. They become blue. They become depressed because they don't belong. They don't have all of this. Why do we need this? Because of the last thing. We need to help others have significance. Our significance is not in what we get. Some product that we get that makes our life easier. Something that we like that gets us attention. Our life is not about what we get. Our life is about what we what? Give. It's about what we give to others. And you can't give to others unless you know others to give to. This It's what our spiritual life is all about. But unfortunately, we've chosen another way. Y'all, God has brought us here to help other people experience healing spiritually. Let's get personal. It's number three. It won't take long. God can use me in the healing process of myself. Jesus asked the question, do you want to get well? And that's my question to you and my question to me. Do I want to get well? Instead of me thinking about other people who, need, who are sick, who need to be well, which I need to be thinking about other people to help them be well, I first of all really honestly need to look at myself to see, am I sick? Because if I'm sick, I'm not going to be helping other people who are around me get well. So what do I need to do? I need to see. I need to see who I am. Do I have a problem? Am I physically sick? Is it physiological? Is it psychological? Is it spiritual? Am I spiritually sick? Y'all, we've all been spiritually sick. All of us have experienced that in our lives. Do I see this about myself? Here's the deal. We don't change until we want to change. We see a need to change. There's some people who are sick and comfortable. They're sick and they wallow in their self-pity. They wallow in their hopelessness and they're comfortable with it and refuse to do anything to make their lives any better. There's some people who are that way. They'll instead just try to take advantage of other people who will take pity on them just to make it through life. There are other people who are this way. They don't see themselves because they're too busy looking at the problems of other people. They're too busy judging other people for their problems. They're not like Jesus and saying, hey, he's sick. I want to heal him to win the right to be heard so he'll stop sinning and know God. They instead want them to be punished and pay for the things that they've done wrong. They want to be better than everybody else. They're constantly comparing themselves to everybody else. They're constantly trying to put everybody else down so they can elevate themselves up to be better than everyone else. By the way, that's your spiritual problem. That's your sin. That's selfishness. Because life is not about me. It's about what it is that I do to help other people be better. And yet here I am trying to cause other people pain instead of helping them be better. 
I need to see it. I need to learn. I need to learn what my problem is. Why am I in the condition that I'm in? What is it that I have trusted in that doesn't love me back? Have I become a person who has alienated myself away from other people and don't belong? Have I tried to find hope in my life through what I get instead of what I give? I need to learn about myself so that I can finally act to do something about it. What is the action? It's disconnecting from one thing that you've been trusting in and pairing yourself with someone else. Oh, that is good. We need to pair ourselves with God. How? Hmm. I choose where to place my hope. It's in him. What else? I choose to love God because God loves me back. What else? I choose to belong to a community of believers because together we can support and encourage one another as we become more like Jesus. What else? I choose to have significance and to become like Christ and begin making sacrifices for the good of other people. You know what happens when we do that? We become like Jesus. Oh, this is, this is really sweet. Hold on. And our lives are written in red. There you go, right there, you see? So should I write it or should I not write it? Okay, I'll just, I'll just take a quick scoot, all right? It's so fun. It really is. Kickstand. Oh, did you hear it? This is where I had a problem before. Okay, let me stop. Isn't this awesome? Where is what you're trusting in taking you? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. What is God teaching you today? Are you sick? God wants you to be well. Here's the good news. Hey, if you do have physiological problems, if you have something wrong with your body, God is a God who heals. And we believe in the miraculous power of a healing God. And it may be that he chooses to heal you. But if he chooses not to heal you on this earth, he chooses to heal you. The moment you step foot in heaven where there is no more sickness, there is no more pain, we are in a perfect holy body in the presence of God. We have a hope for that eternity, and that's the reason why if we get sick as a believer, we don't lose our hope because we know what we long for is coming in our future. It may not be here. It may be there. It might be today that you're struggling and are sick because you've got some psychological issues that you've been thinking the wrong things, that you've been unforgiving and bitter or you've been depressed and anxious and angry because of what's happened to you and you're blaming the circumstances or other people and it's just causing you misery and you are overeating, you're abusing substances, you're doing all of these things to try to find some solution for your life. And it will never, ever heal you. It won't. Why? Because the root of it is in spiritual. What we think about is what we tend to trust in and believe in. So when we begin thinking about God and believing that God has a plan for all things... And that God still loves me even though I don't deserve his love. Even though I've done sinful things. God still wants me to be healed spiritually. To be forgiven. So that I may know him personally. And belong to the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us if we call on the name of the Lord we'll be saved. Saved from what? From hopelessness. That's from what? God wants to give you hope today and we find it in him. We do it through prayer. So I want to help you today. If, you're, if you don't have a relationship with God, I want to help you pray a simple prayer. A prayer that can change everything for you. Your life here and your life for eternity. Because we change 
who we trust in and who we believe in and what we believe about our future, that we will be with him. I would encourage you to say these words to God just silently. Just pray these words to him. Dear God, I know you love me and I don't deserve it. Thank you for your love. Thank you for proving it by sending Jesus to die on the cross, to take the punishment for my sins, and to be resurrected to defeat death forever. I accept what you did for me, Jesus, for my forgiveness. And I commit my life to be like you, to love God, our Father, like you love God, to love people like God loves people and like you love people, and to be the servant that you want me to be so that I can help other people understand the love that you have given me. Thank you for saving me. If you just pray that prayer a minute, God hears you and says yes to you. In just a moment, we're all going to stand and we're going to hear some music. We have some of our counselors and staff down at the front, and they'd love to encourage you. It might be that today you just prayed that prayer of salvation, and you want to let somebody know about the decision that you've made. There are people that you could let them know that. You can just come and say, hey, I just prayed that prayer uh, with Tim. I just prayed that prayer. We just want to celebrate with you and encourage you. We want to make sure we get uh, some materials in your hand. We want to give you a free Bible or a devotional book to help you as you begin your, your spiritual journey. We want to help you and encourage you in that. It might be that you're a Christian, and it might be that you, you know what, I, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, but I've just got sin in my life, and I've gotten engaged in things. I'm trying to find release from my problems through other means, and it's caused me problems, and I just need somebody to encourage me and pray for me. We would love to do that. Maybe you just want to share that with them. Or maybe you've got some other type of issue. Maybe you need prayer for someone who's sick or whatever it may be, or a relationship issue. We want to pray for you. Not only do we have those counselors down in front, back in the back, there are two banners that say the journey begins as you leave today. And maybe you're lingering around and you're trying to find somebody to talk with. They're back there after the service to talk with you, to encourage you in these same things. Whatever God leads you to do, we want to encourage you to do it now. So let's all stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. We're going to hear a song right now, and as we do that, I would encourage you to come for prayer or pray where you are to decide to be obedient to God right now. So let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for what you taught us today. God, it's so good. I thank you for sending Jesus to interact with people, to help us see what love looks like, love in action. And I thank you for a loving Savior who loved a sinful man, hoping for the best for him that he would turn from his sin. And I thank you, God, that you had that same love for every one of us that you love us, you don't want to condemn us or judge us, you want us to be saved. And I pray, God, that we would remember that. God, I pray that you would be with those who are still struggling, that they would be courageous and to reach out to, to someone, to talk with them, even if it's after the service. God, just to find a word of encouragement or a word of hope or the help that they need so that we, God, may be well. 
Do I want to be well? May the answer always be yes. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you.